Hi, you guys, it's Yaz. I want to tell you about my two books that are on Amazon, okay? You can download them free with the trial membership from Kindle. The first book is Regain Your Power. If you're in a relationship and you feel like your partner has all the control in the relationship, maybe you're walking around on eggshells, you're afraid to approach them, it's going to tell you how to regain your power and, and be happy in the relationship, okay? And what you may be doing wrong, and that's why your partner has all the control in the relationship. The other book is he's Signs He's Not Into You, He's Wasting Your Time. There's a lot of people that are dating someone or in a relationship with somebody who's not really vested in the relationship. And we, we often are confused as to whether our partner really likes us or is into us or wants a future with us. And this book is going to give you signs and red flags of whether your partner is into you or he's just basically drifting and wasting your time. So go to Amazon and download the Kindle free trial membership. Doesn't cost you anything. And check it out. It may help you. Okay? And have a great day. Hi, you guys. It's Yaz. I'm going to talk to you tonight about being quarantined during the global pandemic. Okay? Everybody is living through this. We're all going through this. There's a lot of people that are very frustrated, feeling very alone, feeling depressed. And I want to talk to you about a couple of issues that I think a lot of people are dealing with. The first topic I'm going to talk about is loneliness. Okay, there's a lot of people out there that are doing social distancing that live alone. Okay, and it's very difficult for them because it's the same process day by day. One of the things I wanted to get into is number one, all right, if you're looking to date and you're going on the dating apps, all right, in no way or form should you go meet somebody, all right? Another thing I want to bring up is that you do not invite anybody over to your home as well, all right, for a couple of reasons, even if you know that person and you've met them before. All right. You need to take this pandemic very seriously. All right. Um, you don't want to bring anybody over to your home, especially if you don't know them well, because for a couple of reasons. Number one, you don't want to take that chance by bringing somebody into your home that could be asymptomatic to the virus. All right. That's one very good reason. All right. And another reason is that you don't want this person to know where you live. You do not bring anybody to your home because until you really know somebody, you don't know. They could be crazy. They could stalk you. It's a safety issue. I don't care how nice they were when you met them once, twice, three times. Okay. People know how to put on an act in the beginning, all right? So you have to be very careful. Sometimes you don't really know who you're dealing with. So do not invite anybody over to your home whatsoever, all right, that you you met on a dating app or anything like that, all right? That's very important. Plus, you have to, you know, you have to be careful about the health risks as well, all right? Um, the other thing that I want to bring up is, are you very lonely? Of course you're lonely, but you have to keep in mind, you are not the only one going through this. The whole world is going through this. There are millions of people that are alone that are going through this, all right? This is just a particular time that we have to get through, all right? So it will pass in time. The number one concern is your health. Your dating and your relationships will come later on, all right? Is that an inconvenience? Yes, of course it's an inconvenience. Everybody's going through it. But if you will see what they're dealing with in the hospitals, okay, and especially in New York City, all right, it's not a joke, you guys. It's got to be taken seriously, uh, one of my best friends works in the ICU in a New York City hospital, and two of her co-workers have passed away along with one of her tenants. So 
you know, it's out there and it's not just New York City, okay? Because it could be in other areas as well. New York City, you have to remember, has done a lot of testing. This virus could be in other areas and just people don't know about it because not enough tests have been done. They've only done, um, I think they said tonight, 5.1 million tests in the United States. It sounds like a lot, but it's not. It's less than 2%. All right, because there's a roughly about 330 Americans nationwide. So under 2% of the population has been tested. So they don't know exactly where this invisible illness is and who's got it. So you cannot take a chance by meeting somebody off a dating app because you're lonely. All right. You you have to rough it. You got to tough it out, you guys. You have to tough it out and you got to take it seriously. I mean, I had another friend who was working in a different hospital in the city. You know, he was dealing with the amount of death there and everything like that. And it's really, you know, it's very evident that it's all over and it's very serious. It's not, you know, inflated numbers. Okay, it's very real. And if you talk to people that are on the front lines that work in healthcare, they will tell you, you know, it's a very, you know, serious uh, illness that is going on. So I know it's very difficult. What you need to do, though, like I've said in my prior podcast, is you need to have a routine. All right. And you could switch up that routine. You need to have a focus throughout your day, how you're going to plan your day. Whether it's you get up in the morning, maybe you do a little exercise routine, maybe you read a book, I don't know what line of work you're in, maybe you could focus on your work and try to excel and work from home and keep your mind busy. You want to keep your mind busy, all right? When you keep your mind busy, it's much healthier for you. When you have nothing to think about, okay, that's when you get depressed, like they say, an empty mind is a devil's workshop. And it's it's true in the fact that, you know, that's when you start to feel very, you know, you're all by yourself and you start feeling sorry for yourself and you're bummed out and you're thinking about all the negative things in your life. What you need to do as, is kind of look at this as you're going to work on yourself, During this time period, you're going to work on yourself, all right? You're going to take care of yourself. You might want to do a couple of exercises. There's videos on YouTube that you could watch. You know, there's yoga, there's meditation. Meditation is becoming very popular too during this pandemic, you guys. It helps a lot of people relieve a lot of stress, all right? The other thing I want you to keep in mind for a lot of people that are social distancing and they're all alone in an apartment or they're by themselves is, you know, some, you know, there's pros and cons to everything. You got to remember that because there's other people that are quarantining with somebody and believe me, they wish they were alone. All right. Because if you're stuck in a situation, you're stuck at home with somebody, you know, after a while, that person could get on your nerves and you wish you had your own space. That's why for those people that are quarantining with their partner or a friend or their children, all right, everybody needs a little bit of alone time, all right? Um, But, you know, the grass always looks greener. The people that are quarantining alone wish that they had somebody. The people that are quarantined are, are, you know, in a home with somebody, they wish they were alone and had their own space. So, you know... Everybody thinks the grass is greener, but the point I'm trying to make is this, all right? What you need to do is you need to focus on yourself, and that's really important, all right? Because when you focus in on yourself, you can look back on your relationships that you've had, and you know, it's kind of like you stop dead in your tracks, and you think back on the relationships you had. And it gives you a chance to really evaluate where did everything go wrong? What went wrong with my prior relationships? Was it me? Was I picking the wrong partners? Okay, you know, you you get to kind of do a self-analysis of yourself. It gives you your own time to think about, really, what do you want? What, What kind of partner 
would make you happy? Am I really looking for the right people in the right places? All right. So, you know, you got to kind of zone in on yourself and say to yourself, you know, I need to really think about what I want out of life. All right. And you work on yourself. You know, the reason that I'm bringing this up is because there's a lot of people that go through breakups and are very devastated by the the breakup, all right? But what they don't realize is a lot of times when they're broken up from somebody, all right, the thing is, they're missing more the feeling that they had with that person than that person themselves. They miss the feeling of that security of having somebody, but when they take a step back and they look at the relation, Chip, you know, that's why, you know, they say time heals all wounds. They look back on it and they say to themselves, wow, how could I have ever stayed with that person? How could I have allowed that person to have treated me that way? All right. They they get kind of like, you know, they reevaluate everything and they're able to pinpoint, you know, that they really weren't looking at the situation for the way it was. So use this time to think about your relationships that you were in. Were you picking the wrong partners? Are you going in a circle? That's why you're not having a lot of luck. Maybe you're picking people that, you know, just want to play the field, that just want to have options. Maybe you're picking people that aren't grown up enough to to have a relationship. Because one of the things you got to understand too is, You know, just because somebody is nice doesn't necessarily mean that that's somebody you could have a lifelong commitment with that will be a good partner. Uh, You know, I'm going to give you also another example. If you're meeting somebody on the dating apps and that person is saying, well, I don't care about social distancing, I'll come out and I'll meet you. That is reckless. That is a person that is reckless, all right? Now, you have to think to yourself, do you want to be in a relationship with somebody who doesn't take this situation seriously? There's 50,000 Americans that are dead today, okay, because of this pandemic. And if you're dealing with somebody who wants to take a chance to come out and see you, you have to keep in mind, too, if they're coming out to see you, they're probably coming out to see other people, too. All right. That's how you got to, you know, look at the situation. All right. And you don't take a chance because your health comes first. Your health comes first. That person, believe me, is not going anywhere. When this pandemic is over, nine times out of 10, they'll still be around. All right in a lot of cases, all right? And especially if they're the kind of person that's a player. Players are always around, all right? Trust and believe me on that, all right? You could contact them three years from now and they're they're in the same spot they were, all right, when you met them. But the point I'm trying to make with this whole, you know, quarantine life, yes, it's very frustrating. Yes, it's very depressing. You have to keep busy. You have to find things to keep you busy throughout your day, all right? Um, My biggest suggestion would be to delve into your work, you know, or, you know, get into your hobbies, start writing, start reading, you know, the books on Amazon. You can download Kindle, you know, they give you a one month free uh, trial. You can download whatever you want on there. You know, I know everybody's tired of Netflix. Everybody's movied out, right? You know, you could reach out to people, reach out to friends, you know, expand your horizon. All right, you can't do it in a physical sense, but you could do it in an emotional sense. People could fill up your day emotionally. And that means either on the phone, on social media, by video chatting. Yes, it's virtual. We know it's virtual, but we have a, a a global crisis that is going on out there, all right, that we do not have a vaccine for. So we need to take this seriously because we value human life, all right? And if we have to, you know, rough it, we have to rough it. We have to tough it out. And that's what we're going to do, all right? We're not going to take chances, all right? And um, the other thing, I don't even like to touch upon this is that ludicrous 
you know, statement that they made with the Lysol. Lysol will kill you, okay, ingested, all right? I'm sure you, you all should know that, all right? But I just wanted to touch upon that, all right? And as far as the UV light that they were suggesting, UV light can cause cancer, I heard as well. So, um, you know, just be, just take care of yourselves and, and, you know, don't listen to a lot of, you know, things on the news that, you know, are ludicrous. You have to use your own judgment, your own common sense, all right? And the key here is prevention. And the only way to prevent anything is to stay home if you can if you can you guys all right like my friend who works in the ICU in the hospital in New York City she's got three masks on when she goes in there plus the face shield plus three garments when she goes in I mean believe me you have no idea what these people deal with all right so what I'm telling you is you have to take it seriously and you have to just say, you know what? I'm just going to take it one day at a time. Let's get through this. Slowly, this is going to diminish. Slowly, the curve is coming down. It's coming down. The more we social distance, the more it'll come down, all right? And we will get through that. And the people that matter to us will be there at the end of this pandemic, all right? The person that you meet online if they're really serious and care to know you, they won't have any problem with trying to talk to you, let's say, on a regular basis on the phone or video chatting with you on a regular basis. Or they'll be the kind of person to say, no, you know, we won't take this risk. When it's safe, we will meet. But, you know, I want to get to know you anyway. You know, we could still talk at night. You can play games online with them. You could play pool with them. There's other online games you guys could do together, all right, that people do. There's a million and one different things, all right? But I just wanted to, you know, touch upon, you know, everybody's lonely. You're not alone. And you have to just kind of be in a routine of what you could do, you know, whether it's redo your apartment or like I said, if you're that lonely, you need to, you know, reach out to people that you could have conversations with. They don't have to be your lifelong partner. All right. You could reach out to people just as friends, just to have somebody to talk to. All right. Because everybody's in the same boat. Everybody's going through the same thing. And slowly, you know, it's a slow process, you guys. It's not something that happens overnight, all right? Like I said, the whole world is going through it. So when you're talking about dating and you're getting online and you're trying to meet people, all right, just look at it like, you know what? I'm going to meet them and I'm going to learn them and I'm going to find out what this person is emotionally, all right? This is your time to search out and see what kind of person you're dealing with by asking them questions about themselves, asking them questions about their prior relationships, find out about their childhood, all right? Somebody's childhood tells you a lot, you guys, about what kind of person you're dealing with. Are they a damaged person, all right? There's a lot of damaged people in the world. When I say damaged, I mean like, they, they have emotional barriers, all right? For instance, a lot of women have come to me and they've dealt with men that have said to them, oh, well, you know, he, he talks about, oh, all you women are the same, or yeah, everybody cheats. Anybody who's got that attitude is a red flag, all right? Is somebody who's probably been burned in a prior relationship, and when you get involved with somebody like that, they're going to carry that hurt over into the relationship with you. So you don't want to get involved with somebody who's emotionally damaged, all right, that already has a bad taste in their mouth because of prior relationships. You want somebody that's open to, you know, experience a relationship with you and has an open mind about it and is not going in saying, oh, all you women are the same or all you men are the same, all right? It could go both ways, male, female, female, male, partner to partner, all right? They have to have a positive outlook as to wanting something, you know, 
they have to look at it like a relationship is a fulfilling thing for them, all right? You want somebody that's ready, that's emotionally ready, that's responsible, all right? And somebody's responsible will take the pandemic seriously, all right? Not recklessly, because possibly they could want to meet you because they're just looking for sex, all right? So why are you going to put yourself in a situation to go meet somebody like that that may only be looking for sex? Put them through the interview process. Make sure that they get on the phone with you and they talk to you on a regular basis and they earn, you know, your attention, your time, all right? And when it's safe and they let you know that it's safe, that people could go out again, then you meet that person, all right? If somebody is really looking to get to know you, they should have no problem with getting to know you on the phone or or through video, okay? All right, so keep that in mind and don't let anybody use you for video sex as well, okay? Because I'm sure a lot of them out there are going to try to do that, all right? Don't... Don't do that. Don't sell yourself short, all right? I mean, unless you're in a situation where you're into that, that's totally different. But if you're just looking for, um, if you're looking rather for something that's more and you're looking for a relationship, uh, you know, unless you're in a relationship, that's totally different, all right? You want that person to invest in you, all right? To give you their time, their energy, okay? And make you a priority, you you don't go and you don't meet anybody, all right? So you need to take that seriously. I hope that helps you. Remember that this is a transition period. This will pass like all other crises in life. This will pass, all right? Nothing stays the same, you guys, all right? Remember that. So in time, this will all pass, all right? But we have to tough it out. We have to get through it, all right? And we don't take a chance in dating by going out and meeting somebody, all right? I, I, I personally don't even think that, you know, somebody should go out and meet them even in a park or something because you know what? They said, and they confirmed it tonight on the news that the aerosols stay in the air. And I've read in numerous medical journals that it stays in the air for three hours, Why would you want to take that chance? Because even if you did want to go meet somebody, you can't get close to the person. So, I mean, you're better off playing it safe and and dealing with the emotional bond that you will build with them from home, on the phone, virtually. Does it suck? Yeah, it sucks. But you know what? It'll pass and at least you know you have your health. All right? You won't have to sit back and worry if you went and met somebody that in two weeks, all of a sudden you have a runny nose and now you got to worry about that, all right? And you don't want to bring anybody into your home or your place and they know where you live, okay? Or they possibly could be asymptomatic or be bringing in any kind of virus into your home, all right? This is so contagious, you guys. They can come in your house and it could be on the bottom of their shoe, all right? It stays on the bottom of a shoe I read for three days. So keep this all, you know, in your mind and be safe, you guys. And just when you're starting to get down, you're starting to feel low, just remember this will pass. You're going to take one day at a time and, you know, you're just going to get through it. All right. I hope that helps you. If it did, please hit the subscribe button and share and be safe. Have a great night.